Welcome, Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord has finally come out last month and I decided that it would be a good idea to make a tutorial on the basics of the game. The game isn't too hard, but there's a lot of people who would like to would like to take a shortcut and learn the stuff from someone else and not have to research themselves. So here's my video. So let's get right into it. And I need my glasses or I won't be able to do, show anything. So here we go. Uh, I already played the game, of course, but I am going to start a new game. Okay, so we're going to start a new game. You can watch the uh, the intro in your own games. All right, so here we get the uh, the menu so that you can select the culture. All of the, the cultures have a specific set of buffs or debuffs, depending on what you're choosing. And you're gonna want to select the uh, the culture that matches your playstyle. So for example, Vlandians, Blendians are more battle focused. So they get more renown for battles and income from serving as mercenaries. So they want to be a battle heavy culture that focuses on fighting enemies or serving as mercenaries to do exactly the same fighting enemies. It does cost them more influence when they want to recruit lords for their for their armies. The Sturgeons. You can read their descriptions right here. The Sturgeons are more focused on having large armies, on having very large armies. It is way cheaper for them to have a large army as well as upgrading their troops. So they're a very military army focused group culture. Their troops are cheaper to upgrade. Their infantry troops are cheaper to upgrade and their armies lose less cohesion. You'll see that later on, but basically you can get a bunch of armies together and form one big army. And this, that is easier for Sturgeons. But uh, relationship penalties for kingdoms and decisions cost more. So that they're more militaristic. They're more focused on the military and less focused on diplomacy. You can do both, it's just gonna cost a little more. The Empire, this is my favorite culture. The Empire is more focused on keeping what they've conquered. Their garrisons cost less and being in an army brings them more influence. So they're more focused on after they conquer and capture, they're more focused on keeping that. SRI. They, I actually like the SRI a lot as well. SRIs are merchants, basically, and they like to be on the desert. They like to do training on the desert because they have no speed penalty. Uh, uh, the, their troops are a little more expensive. Their troop wages, so maintaining your troops is a little more expensive. Crusades, I think is how you say that. Recruiting and upgrading mounted troops are 10% more cheaper and 25% bonus to horse, mule, cow, and sheep in villages owned by crusade roller, rulers. 10% less tax income from towns. Basically, they are focused on cavalry. A lot of cavalry, a lot of uh, cavalry with uh, bows and arrows. They are very mobile. And their towns make me less money. Batanians. Batanians? Batanians? I don't know how to say that. 50% less speed penalty and 15% sight range bonus in forest. They like to be in the forest. Town Towns owned by Batanians. Batanians? Town. I'm going to call them Batanians. Batanians. Towns owned by Batanians. Rulers have plus one militia production. 10% slower build rate for town projects and settlements. They build slower than anyone else. Okay, so those are all the cultures. Mind you, these buffs and debuffs are not a huge deal. So if you like a certain culture because of how they look or whatever, you don't have to worry too much about the uh, buffs and debuffs. But if you want to be as efficient as possible, then you should definitely keep it in mind. So I decided to go with Blendians because the, the percent of renown that I get from battles is really going to help me build my clan renown a lot faster and the game is going to be shorter, I'm thinking. So here you can choose your character, you know, create all the stuff that you want to create. I'm going to go random with most of it. Mind you, if you choose a female character, the game is slightly harder because of discrimination. You know how it was back in the day. 
So here you choose the starting stats for your characters. You can put your mouse on top of them and read what they do, what they do exactly. Uh, I definitely recommend getting some points on trade if you want to do trade, or you can just focus on fighting of any kind that you may like. Mind you, most of your fights you are going to rely on your troops heavily, so tactics is a good stat to get as well. You can now fight one against a thousand, so you're definitely going to need your troops. I'm getting some merchant. I got a bit of a merchant. I'm focusing on more merchant. I got some stewardship because that increases the amount of troops that you can have. Right here, stewardship. I'm going to name my guy. My name. Here you can choose everything that you chose. And here you choose the difficulty. You can make it as difficult as you want. I'm going to make it easier for video purposes. And you can also have the computer allocate the perks for your clan members automatically. If you like to manage your clan members, then don't click that. And the Iron Man mode is basically you cannot save a game and then load from that game uh, from a previous save. You can't save the game several times and load different times. It basically forces you into only saving and loading the same save so it, it makes the game a little harder because you cannot uh, correct mistakes i am not gonna press that for again video purposes here you start with the tutorial this looks like an old training field i'm going to skip the tutorial but i strongly recommend that you do it simply because the fighting style is a little different are you sure about that so yep i'm skipping so here you show up on a field that you can always go back and do the, the tutorial again at some point, by the way. So you get a little notification there. This explains what the banner is, whatever. And this is going to be your clan name. So like I usually go for my last name, but it can be anything. And now you choose what your banner is going to be. I really like the Roman Empire, so I'm going to do something similar to that. Uh, and here's the size of the banner. It's super small, super large. So that's going to be my banner. So you left click on the map to move around. You can double click to increase the speed. The speed is right here. You can press three. Here you can see the time of the day and you can reset your camera with right click. You can keep it pressed and move the camera any way you want. If you press the little circle in the middle, it will reset your camera to default. There you go. You're in the middle of, oh, you can scroll in or out. And you can see the map is pretty big. There's a lot of settlements. If you zoom in, you'll see smaller castles and villages. So there is a lot of map to work with. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is go to a mayor city and I'm going to recruit some troops, the cheapest I can find so that I can, so that I do not get raided by bandits and lose everything I have. I don't have a lot though, which is, I guess in this case, good. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at all the goods in the marketplace so that I can see the prices and stuff. Then I'm going to move on to villages. You can recruit troops from villages. Oh, there's a bandit there. Let me try and go to the next village. And recruit more troops. As soon as I have around 20 men, that's more or less what most bandits have in this area. So they cannot lo they can no longer beat me. Oh, there's a lot of bandits there. There's like 26. Just as, as I was saying that, he's chasing me now. But I'm going to hide in the city. Oh, there's not a lot of troops around here. I have my 11 troops. These 26 bandits are not interested in me. Remember, left clicking is what makes you go around the map i have 21 troops now i have to buy food for my troops or else they will lose body morale and at some point they will start leaving your your body party 
So I'm going to buy some food. A little bit of this and that. So you can see the food you have right here. It tells you how many days of food you have left. I have 22 days until there is no food. Mind you, uh, having a different types of food in your party will help you increase your will help you increase your stewardship. Uh, on your character window right here on the left, you can click any of your skills and it will tell you what the skill gives you and if you click down here up here it will tell you exactly how to learn the skill and the an explanation of the skill so this is really useful when you're looking to increase a specific skill you also have focus points which basically increases the amount of experience you get for each focus for example my stewardship has a learning limit of 60. It increases your learning limit. That's what it's called. So this is my current level. And this is my learning limit. Right here. The same for all the other skills. I'm looking to buy and sell a lot. So I'm going to increase my focus points. on And my learning. And my learning limit. On the uh, trade. And trade is done by getting profits from selling and buying products on cities. I'm moving on to the next city. Right here we can see all the products. Uh, once you have some points on your trading, you, the products that are... So here you can see the prices. Mind you, once you have some points on your trading, you won't have to worry about that because your your trading will be marked. For example, this mid has the 22 gold on green, which means it's a pretty good price. And I don't have a lot of points on my trading yet, so it will be even easier later on. So I'm going to buy the cheapest product they have here. Oh, actually, it's clay. I'm going to buy a little bit of clay. I'm going to remember the price anyway, just in case. I exceeded my capacity, so I bought it at 8. I want to sell it for more than 8 on another city. Let's try Lycaron. So we arrived. It's selling before 9. So I can sell most of it. Oh, actually I can sell all of it. And I will make a profit. I'm hoping I made a profit. I, don't, I actually don't remember how much I had. So we continue to do that. Uh, mind you, you have quests that you can complete, but I like to make some money first, so that I am not, so that I can pay for my trips and defend myself. The other way to make money uh, in the early game is now that I have 21 soldiers with me, I want to find a party of bandits that is weaker than me. Mind you, these bandits, the looters, are the weakest type of bandit that there is. These bandits are a lot stronger. Forest bandits, they're a lot stronger. They have better equipment. So at the beginning, you want to go for looters. They have the same flag, all of them. So you can always go for that flag. Left click them, and once you catch them, you'll see this window. Uh, so you can either let them go, but we're fighting them. So we attack. If you at click attack, it will send you personally with your troops to fight. If you s click send troops, your troops will go by themselves. But since it's early game and my troops are very inexperienced, I want to make sure I'm there. So I'm going to choose myself as a captain. I'm going to click ready. And here we have our moving commands. And when you press 1, infantry! you choose the infantry. As you have more troops later on, you can, sh you can click uh, press the other buttons. And if you click F1, it will give you a movement command that you can choose. Right now, they're on a stop. If you press F2, F3, whatever, you can see there what it does, all of them. So I am going to press F2 so that they follow me. And I start walking towards the enemy. If you press Alt, you can see exactly where the enemy is. So they're getting close to me and I want my troops to fight. So I'm going to press, since I already chose my troops, I can press F1 again. 
And I'm going to send them to charge with, with F3. Charge! And as my troops are going to be my shield, I will come from the side. It's kind of difficult. In the beginning, because you don't really have any skills. But as you learn more skills, you'll be able to attack faster. And you will also get the hang of the uh, range on, on your weapon. You can also get down from your horse by pressing F if you want to. Fighting is going to be something that you have to learn. Uh, right click cancels, uh, right click blocks and left click attacks. You can press tab to exit the battle and see the results. And then you get taken into the troops. If you got any prisoners, you can catch them. And all the loot, I'm going to grab all. And I'm done. This is the other way to make money. Now you can sell the loot. Aside from the fact that you actually get money just from defeating other armies. Uh, this just means that your the, your unit cohesion is kind of low because you just had a battle. But that fixes itself after a little bit. So I'm going to go to the next city. There you go, it's fixed. And sell all the loot and ransom the prisoner. Uh, you can also. I usually try to make. Uh, I usually try to use the loot that I get to make my equipment better, to upgrade my equipment. For example, I don't have arm wraps, so I'll get that. You can see here the green stats are the ones that are better than the ones you have equipped. So, for example, this armor has better but better body armor than the one I'm using, so I'm going to use that one. This one's way better. So there we go. Armor boots. I already have all the boots. Uh, I already have the best boots available. And I don't really like this type of weapons. So I'm not going to do those. So I'm now going to sell my loot. And we're making 400 bucks. Just from that fight. Mind you, now you can also upgrade your troops on the party window. You can also press P. And right here, you see... That my troops learned 13 of them are ready to upgrade i like to have a variety of troops so i'm going to click one each you can also press uh control to upgrade all or you can press shift to upgrade i think it's five so i upgraded some of my troops mind you the troops are going to cost more money to maintain their wages are going to go up as you upgrade them so you can choose to not upgrade if you don't want to pay more there is another group of bandits here. I'm going to replenish my troops again. The prices on this village are horrible. See now, since I've been on other cities, you can see here it says you can buy this at Fikion for 12. So since my... Since I have some points on my... On my trading, my character can now tell uh, from rumors which cities have better prices. This will increase the more points you have. Classic RPG. So we're looking for low price stuff here. Ficaon. Ficaon. So when you're setting a lot and you have some decent troops to defend you from other looters and raiders and bandits you want to expand the cities that you visit so that you can see more prices so this is basically what the early game is about making money getting some troops increasing your stats you got a problem got a problem he says of course i have a problem oh, amazing information for Arrows, so we're going to create an arrow formation. There you go. So now I have two types of troops. I'm going to send my troops to fight and my archer, my archers to follow me. F2 is follow. So I'm going to position my arch my archers here. You can also press the troop that you're trying to speak to, which in this case I want to speak to my uh, archers, and I want to place them here with a left click. Forward and escape. And they go over there. 
They're already shooting though. They're, you, you don't have to worry about them not shooting while they're walking. See if I can get a hit in. There you go. It's so hard to fight from from the horse. I hate it. There you go. So we keep getting renown and morale. We plundered like 90 gold, I think it said. And my leadership has now gone up to 13. We got some loot. So we go to Fikeon. Fikeon. So we're going to once again check for better equipment. Uh, I didn't have anything on my head. Oh my god, I look horrible. This is what happens when you're poor. This is what happens when you're game poor. So now I'm going to sell these weapons. And so the way you ransom your prisoners is going to the uh, tavern here, taverns district, and ransom your prisoners. There are other options that you can look around and, and play with. Right now I'm only focused on increasing my wealth and my troops. By the way, so the other window here, I already showed you character, which is C here, inventory, which is I, body, which is P, uh, quest journals, whatever, and the clan window. This is basically your clan. It shows your skills, uh, your traits, your name, whatever. You can click if you had more family members, you can click them here. And if you had extra companions, you can also click it here. You have parties. You can create new parties later on when you have uh, when your clan tier increases. Uh, my next tier is with 50 Reno and I have 13. So you keep fighting. Fighting is basically the only way to get renowned. And you can also get caravans that will that will trade for you. So you can have a caravan business business. And this is if you own any towns or castles or whatever, the garrison for those. These are your fiefs. And this is other stuff. For example, if you, you can go to a city and use your money to invest on a workshop of any kind. And it will show here. I yet, I don't know what supporters are yet. We'll see later. By the way, you can also see any other uh, clan leaders or members if you click here. You get taken to the to the uh, encyclopedia, and here you can see everything about the game. If you have any doubts, you can see it here. So we continue on our fight against the Win. bandits. Send them my troops to fight. Kill them all. I have a lot more men than they do, so I don't really care about positioning well. But one of the strategies that you can try and use is having your archers fire on the enemy before they arrive for as long as possible and then use your infantry to uh, fight them close range. If you have cavalry you can also send them to the side and then have them attack from the back and flank the enemy. Get our loot. By the way, once you're in a city, so that you understand, these are the uh, specifics of the city. You can read them here, up top. These are the people that are now inside the city. These are mostly merchants and stuff like that. Uh, down here on the left, you can also click and you'll see all the troops and lords in the city. Uh, you have the tavern district where you can sell your uh, prisoners or you can hire extra people. Also, Sometimes here, one of the people from some of the people from here could also be a companion that you can hire for around 400 gold. Sometimes you have the arena that you can go fight normally in it, or you can also wave some castles, some towns and castles 
of tournaments going, those pay pretty well. But you can definitely fight in the arena. Uh, you also need to speak with the arena master the first time you get to an arena so you so that he introduces you to it. So you speak with the guy, he explains the whole thing, he explains about tournaments, about practice fights. And this is the explanation how, of how much you make if you fight in a normal fight. You can learn everything you want from there. Uh, again, tap to leave. So let's do a practice fight just to, so you see how it is. Mind you, you use basically your same equipment. Sometimes the weapons and shield are not the same. It's just whatever the... Uh, the tournament is using, but your equipment sometimes is the same. Die, dog. So it's an amazing way to get comfortable with the game mechanics, fighting mechanics, and at the same time making some gold. So this is going to be my... I have earned 25 so far. Oh, 5 so far. It's not a lot of gold. Tournaments give you a lot more gold because you can bet on yourself. And if you know you're going to win, you can bet a lot of gold on yourself and make a lot of gold out of it. You have to be careful because once you take some of these guys out, they will show up behind you and flank you. So you have to be careful with that. I'm so slow. I need to increase my athletics. To be faster. So there's a guy behind me now. I like to go to the, to the sides and try to put my back against the corner so that they cannot catch me from behind. Oh, I lowered my guard too fast there. Oof, there's someone behind me again. Oh wow, that guy hit me from behind. So basically I want to point this guy towards them so they don't hit me. Mind you, the more points on your on your fighting style that you have, the faster you attack and the more damage your attacks do. And also your actual skills get better, your in real life skills at fighting get better. Your game mechanics in, with fighting get better so you'll be able to, to do things a lot better and fight a lot more efficiently and beat these guys super easy and make your free money. Well, I have to try and avoid these arrows. I don't have a shield anymore. By the way, you can pick up stuff from the floor. From the floor. If you get close to it, you look at it and you press F. It picks it up. So I picked up another shield. Oh, there you go. So I've made 25 gold so far. I would say, efficiency-wise, it is a lot easier, a lot faster, and a lot better to make to make your gold fighting bandit on the world, world map because this is just way too slow it's just the time that it takes me to get close to these guys and fight them it's not worth 25 gold i make a lot more than 25 gold with a single uh, bandit party that i fight i won the turn the fight and i get 250 for winning again definitely not enough not the same as definitely not as good as fighting in the world map all right so that's tournament fighting for you
Also, I didn't mention this before, but... Oh, better boots, nice. I didn't mention this before, but your the tournament also give you a final prize, which tends to be a really good weapon of some kind, maybe a horse. So definitely way better to fight in tournaments than fighting normally. But if you really enjoy the fighting style, what the fighting style of the game, you can always, you know, do whatever you want. <laughs> This is just a guide. So now that I have some stuff, I actually have some money. I want to start trading for real. By the way, you can smith your own weapons later on. The way that you unlock the parts for the weapons is by destroying weapons. So once you have really good equipment and you have the, the skills, and if you want to spend some time Making your own, making your own weapons. Uh, by the way, you can only do weapons. You can also make money out of making weapons if you do the orders here. Once you have more skills on the smithy, you can make orders and earn a pretty serious amount of money from them. For example, this guy will give you two thousand gold, but it's a pretty difficult order. But if you enjoy the uh, the Smith inside of games, then definitely give this a try. See if you like it. Uh, once you have all the equipment that you want, you can always go around fighting bandits and destroying the equipment that they drop. And that's how you unlock new parts. And here's the difficulty. For example, if, if I wanted to make a weapon, see how the difficulty increases based. On the part that you're choosing you can also up here choose which parts you want them to show you so for example a tier 5 part will be a lot more difficult if i make everything out of tier 5 the weapon is super difficult but the stats are really good 110 weapon reach the uh damage is right here 80 42 86 92 if you were to choose tier 1 a tier 1 weapon it would definitely be a lot less. See, 38, 33. A lot weaker. A lot less range, but a lot easier to make. So also you get the experience by making weapons, destroying weapons, you know, doing any of these things here. You can refine the, the stuff that you need to, for the weapons as well. And remember, if you're going to focus on this, then make sure that you increase your uh, smithy. Where is the smithy? So you want to increase your focus points on Smith if that's what you're going to do. I like it, but I like to do this on the very, very late game. Because I know that I can create weapons better than the ones in the game. But right now I don't care about it, so I will continue to do the other stuff. This another level on my trading. So now I'm going to focus on trading. Like I said, I have some money to spend so I can actually buy stuff. We can sell a Poros for 28. So let's buy some. Let's just shift to buy five. Five by five. And so the other issue is your weight, which you can increase by having more troops and by buying horses. So uh, I don't want to spend that much gold on horses yet. So I will definitely wait to see if I can find cheaper horses somewhere else uh, also if you have too many horses it can decrease your speed because you'll have a herd so having horses that increases your speed and other horses that increase your weight definitely you have to find the balance <clears throat> so right here I want to sell for 21 uh, actually let's sell a Poros Poros has a lot better pricing, 28, instead of uh, whatever that I was selling for there, which was 19, I think. And I am losing my voice from making the video. So let's sell. Uh, also, by the way, you can also click whatever you're selling and grab this 
and you know make it specific make it a lot faster so i'm going i bought it for oh so yeah it's stayed on 21 due to uh supply and demand the prices will change as you buy and sell so let's go check over here so i have uh 1500 so i'm definitely making some money remember if you are focusing on trade like i am the more money you spend uh if you you know spend it smart then you'll be able to buy more and more and increase your 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 sales so that's 400 here so i'm buying at 16 here which is not the best buy that i can do but i can sell it for more so it's fine my ideal is finding the city with the least with the lowest price and selling it on the city with the highest price to make a big sell so we're selling for, oh wow no this is bad it's selling for 17 and i bought it for 16. so let's see if we can find a city more more expensive than that but for 16 i can always sell it here if i don't find any other cities and i only make a single gold but that's not ideal gain the level mind you this is not the only way of making money if you like fighting a lot more you can always try to once you get your level one clan you can uh try and join one of these uh factions and fight as a mercenary they'll pay you based on your performance so this is 11 nope definitely not i can buy here and sell at poros but i'm gonna buy or so that i have more space so we'll buy here a little more since it's 13 and i'm going to sell at poros for 17. So I ended up selling at 13 for some reason, which again is not ideal. Sometimes you're going to have to take a loss. I am not very happy with that sale. I actually lost money, but that's the issue. That's the cities, the city prices change sometimes. And that's why fighting bandits here and there is very important to keep your money going when you take a loss. An unexpected loss. The safest, safest, most secure way to make money with no losses is definitely fighting bandits. At least the weak ones. Oh, uh, I can buy for 12 here, I guess. We're buying for 12. Let's see if we can sell Poros for more. We're selling for 13 here. I don't want to run completely out of food either. So this is not going well. Let's try and bite something different. It looks like everyone has their food and they don't need anything else. So for example, tools have a green price, meaning that you can sell for higher in other cities. You can also read that Sionica is selling for 138 so this is a great sale when you see that the uh, sign is not as lit up as the other that means that is an old rumor so the prices could have changed oh this is way too much money i was not paying attention all right so i'm going to take the risk of going to sionica and selling for 138 
Uh, we're gonna sell for 106. That's fine. That's not horrible. That's a pretty good sell. So, and we gain two skill points on trade because of how much money we made on that sale. Finally. So let's go ahead and check a new city, see what they got. I'm running low on food, so I would ideally find cheap food so that I can both trade it and have some in my party. Selling for 12, which is not horrible. So beer is green, so let's try and sell beer for 99 at Lycaron. Let's buy some beer. It's perfect. So we'll go to Lycaron. If Lycaron doesn't work, we'll go to Poros. Should be selling for 99 at Lycaron. So we're going to Lycaron. So this is a classic RPG, you know, you have to have some patience. Actually, let's pass by whatever this is called. Just to check the prices, just so that our, just so that our character, just so that our character remembers what's being sold here and he can tell me later. So I lost some morale because I couldn't pay the wages, but it was all due for a good cause. We're selling for 52. Hmm. That was that is not great. That is not great at all. Whatever. Let's sell it. Uh we got another point in trade. At least we're still increasing. Let's go to Amitathis. Amit Amitathis? Amitathis? No idea how to say that. So since we increased our level on scouting, we're going to choose a perk. By the way, perks. Uh, yeah, just read them because I don't know what to tell you. It depends on what on your play style on, and what you want to do. I am a day walker, so I'll choose a day thing. And my trade also has a new perk. So here you can, you can, uh, depending on your play style, if you're only fighting to make money, then you want to go for the uh, decrease in sale price penalty for equipment because you'll be selling the equipment mostly. Since I am focusing on being a merchant, I am going to choose the one for uh, trade goods, which also marks profits on the stuff that I sell, which is awesome. Back off, stranger. <clears throat> Riders! Attack! Move! I'm going to place my infantry there so my arrows soften the enemy up a little bit. Oh, they have rocks. I'll send my infantry in, since they're also using ranged stuff. They're throwing freaking stones. Out of my way, bro. All 
I bid them to the dust. And let's trade our stuff. Oh, better head. <clears throat> so see, now that I got that perk, which is, I would say, the most important perk for trading in the early game, you can now see, based on color, green being the best profit-making stuff, and red or, I guess, orange being the worst. Uh, that's how you can see uh, what... That's how you can see what to sell and buy. So this makes the game a little easier. I am going to sell all the clay. And the butter. And that's it. And I just made 900 bucks. Just like that. We're on 2k already, almost. So now that we've made some money, I want to increase my carry capacity so I'm going to spend a bit of money on horses we go back to trading again nine <clears throat> can be sold at bottles for 14 we're going to sell up bottles for 14 I'm going to carry as much as I can oh this stuff is heavy Let's go to Poros. Let me upgrade my trips since I don't have a lot anymore. Make sure they can at least fight well. Let's get some extra troops. I do not want to lose to a bunch of bandits and lose everything I have on me. That would be horrible. Yes, by the way, careful. If you lose a battle, you will lose almost everything you have on you, on your inventory. Not everything, but most. See, again, uh, marked profits, really good profits, really green, light green. And as we sell... Oh, it actually didn't decrease. They really need food here. Wow. Okay. That's great. Great for us. And another two skill points. So we're going to try and sell again. We can sell this butter at Amitatis for 15. So let's buy butter. I, did I say 15? It's 55. What am I talking about? All right, so it's on 30 already. I'm going to stop there. And we go to Amitatis. So this is the basis. We try and buy cheap and sell high and sell pricey. We fight bandits here and there to increase our our income on the way there. I don't care about six bandits. That's not enough. One more money. They're not efficient. So we want to sell our butter. All of it, actually. Some good money. Let's go. And this is basically what you want to do in the early game. Fight, sell, buy, and until you have a lot of money and you, we can move on, to, move on to better stuff. And when you have a an increasing clan tier, that you have more options in the game. So this is going to be the part one of this tutorial. You know, just grind out your money and your troops and your clan and your levels. And once all of that has increased, uh, you can refer to the second uh, tutorial video to see how, how to move on to better stuff, higher stuff, you know, becoming a, a mercenary, uh, becoming a lord for a castle, uh, becoming a lord for a noble lord for one of the factions, and making caravans to work for you. Uh, also, uh, also investing on cities, you know, uh, city workshops to make you extra income. Once you do all of those, 
you have a pretty steady high income, uh, passive income, and you can actually either keep growing it or focus on fighting and you can start either helping a faction of your choosing to uh, to conquer the entire place or you can become a king yourself uh, so yeah that is actually not very easy you want to have a lot of troops a lot of very well trained troops and I'm talking about those troops are going to be requiring wages up to like 2000 or something like that so you you want to increase your income to a lot of money to be able to maintain such an army. Uh, also, you can increase your family uh, by getting married and having kids, etc. And those family members can also become party members. They can create other parties and also fight for you. You can have more than one party. So once you have another party, you won't be the only party fighting and making uh, clan renown because they're part of your family, they're part of your clan they will also be making uh, clan renown. So, you know, it's like you start expanding on every way possible to make the game, I guess, advance faster or easier for you. So I'm going to stop this tutorial here. And uh, if you like the tutorial, please like, subscribe, and I'll make the second tutorial if, uh, if this video gets enough likes, if enough people like it. So take care.